<laughs> and we are live on the launch, uh, taking your property investing to the next level. How are you going, Joe? Hello. Hello. Yes, we are very. We are, I'm like, oh, he's going to ask the guest first, but we don't have one. It's you and me, Jeff. It's one on one. How are you, yeah. mate? Yeah, I'm excited. It's uh, it's our final push just before Christmas, and it was supposed to be a Christmas party tomorrow, but it is done. There is no Christmas lunch because Christmas lunch has been cancelled, unfortunately. So I was I was saying oh. it would make make me a little sad, but uh, I love watching cricket, so I can get to stay home watch some cricket and do a bit of do a bit of sport and uh, sorry, do a bit of work and and all that. So I'm not too not too fussed about not being able to go to the Christmas thing. So anyway, that's go. cool. Um, but yeah, how how are yeah, you feeling, Joe? Like, We've got a Christmas party, so I'm excited for that. Friday, we've got we've got beers, we've got Christmas, we've got cheers. Super so. sweater. Hey, Joe, I was po- positive. Joe, you will be so positive anyway, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the audience, let, let's get off that because we'll, we'll get cancelled probably. But um, Joe Tucker, oh, here we go. Hayden is here. He said he wasn't going to be here. He said he wanted a live <laughs> negotiation tonight as well. I'd love to see us do that. Let's, oh uh, maybe let, let's not do that. So I mean, this this is going to be epic. It's going to be amazing. You finally agreed to come on with Drag. You're kicking and screaming, and there's going to be a special announcement. So stay tuned, people. It is going to be epic. But let's let's get straight into today because I know you didn't come here to hear me talk and look at my cactus shirt. So Joe, what is your quote of the week, mate? I think uh, I think today is a very important day for uh, opportunity. We are closing in on a new year, and uh, there's greener. Greener pastures coming, so uh, super exciting. So Mike's quote is from Seneca. Again, you you guys already know, but I love a uh, ancient uh, Greek philosopher, and his is luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. All about opportunity, all about luck, but you need to make sure you're prepared and you're actually working towards it. Otherwise, n- n- you never get lucky. It's amazing. It's amazing how many hard work, how many hardworking property investors there are that got lucky. <laughs> It's one of those weird ones. Yeah, that should have been my intro song. Yeah, get get lucky, by for all. Anyway, that's a, that's a, another. Yeah. What but, about you, mate? What is your? Uh, so my go-to? one. It's like I feel like we're on the same wavelength. So my one was by Sun Tzu, and in the middle of chaos lies a significant opportunity by Sun Tzu, the art of war. So I was um, okay. inspired by Jane Slack Smith. She was reading a book by the of a whole bunch of quotes. So Jane, if you're watching, give us a shout out and tell us all about that book. Yeah, well, um, it's funny that we both chose opportunity as our uh, core topic today. Interesting. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's heaps of opportunity now. Even though, yeah, we're going to get a good person next week, but it's not about that. It's about it's about this. So. I'm excited. There's going to be so much value. It's going to be, we want to see questions, comments, and Joe loves answering questions and going in our rabbit holes. So throw as, throw as many curveballs his way as you want, and I'm going to be doing the same as well. <laughs> but before we do that, though, Joe, we should uh, we should get into our – what did we – I've forgotten what we do. We do the quote of the week and then we do I the sponsor. We, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we do, guys. We haven't done this enough throughout the, the, couple of, the last couple of years or year. Um, so let's jump into our first sponsor because we're going to love that. Let's do it. It's something new. No, we don't. Oh. Selling a property. It isn't something we do every single day. There's actually more involved in the process than you may initially think. Like, how do you find the best agent? How do you ensure that you're going to pay the lowest fees? It's not easy. And then also throw in all the stress and pressure of selling. And that's why Scott Agger, a former real estate agent and expert property negotiator, is his leading agent finder service. After a 20-year career managing agents himself, Scott has personally conducted over 3,000 property transactions along with running Three Bell franchises. He knows all these agent tricks. Scott has created an in-depth five-step process for his leading agent finder service. First, he establishes the true market value for your property, he uses a triangulation method to shortlist the leading agents, creates a competitive environment for those agents to send through their best proposals, vets those proposals, and then he negotiates the best agent fees for you. This ensures that you're not only getting the best rate for selling, but most importantly, you have a leading agent on your side selling your property to maximize the end sale value. Oh, and did I mention, this service is completely free. If you'd like to know exactly how Scott runs his five-step leading agent finder service, he's or if you'd like to speak with Scott to help find you the leading agent in your area, book a call today. Selling a property. It isn't something we do. I think you're supposed to the other one, Joe, but that, that's all right, mate. It doesn't doesn't matter because Joe, Joe's on fire tonight. So, so look at him. He's, he's, already, he's already nervous. I've made him nervous. 
So, but I want to give you the intro of, to end all intros. So you you are right. you are what the co. I think that the pinnacle of your life is being the, the co-founder or, or the co-host or whatever you want to call of Oz Property Investors. That is that is absolutely nothing. If you do nothing else in your life, Joe, that is is the that is the pinnacle. So you, your Everest is this? No, it's not necessarily. I've but, hit it. So I'm being. So you are a multi-million dollar property and multi-state. So you you've invested last count at least three states. I don't know. You've probably been buying last. You probably bought internationally. Like I don't know. You, you you're doing no, something new every day. So let's I don't find know, this one back. Tasmania is international, isn't it? I mean, you know, anyway, we're just offended about half of it, three quarters of the country. But also, you are on. You you're on the best one of the best property podcasts because we've got we've got probably one of the best. Uh, pizza and property, and you've been on. I'm just trying to think. And you are the head of sales from Australia's largest legal property technology. So I think that's probably the pinnacle. Oh. But I think. Oz property, yeah. so I'll let the audience decide. Legal tech, but yeah, not yeah, not property tech. Um, but yes, very it's exciting. all the same thing, mate. Property, like computers, like money, ones and zeros. Exactly. Same, same. Yeah, it's all the same. Well, yeah, I'm super pumped for this one. Um, we reached out to the audience, and we used to do these kind of deep dives a little bit, um, but we just wanted to reinvigorate them, right, and put it out to the people, right, and the people voted. They want to see a suburb deep dive. And I guess one of the things is we're very lucky with this medium, right? This, this um, interactive medium where you can we can share our screen. So you can actually just look over my shoulder or over Jeff's shoulder of how we do our research and find property investment opportunities. Um, um, so before, before we do that, though, I want to ask you, Joe, what oh. is the, what is the reason you got into property? Like, tell tell us all about that. Like, what is the driver? Because we don't often ask people that question. That's true. What is the driver? Um, I think just a, a better life is is the driver. We want to all be better. Like, I think it's be. We have a, a saying at work that is be better. There is. <laughs> it's actually not a. De- it's not a deliberate thing. It's more of a joke. But it's just like just be better. Um, but there's a lot of uh, like what inspired me was that that what's that Robert Kiyosaki book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. That started my uh, investing love. Um, and then what fired my investing love up was missing the Sydney market. I was doing all the research. Like I've got all these books here, right? I've got. All of it went and bought them today, I think. Just to... <laughs> All of this research, but it's that action piece that people did that I didn't take. When I had the money, I had all the finances, but I missed that Sydney boom when I had a great opportunity. Um, but as they say, like when opportunity knocks, you've got to take it, um, but it opens another door as well. So um, for me, that's what kicked it off. It started our education, my education piece deeper and my action piece even further. And that's how we met, mate. We met at a the Steve McKnight conference, which was uh, yeah. which was awesome. Last night you called him Phil McKnight. I was like, that, that's a, that's a different sport, a different country. So good that's times. Well, we have to get Steve on here one of these days. But um, but we one of the things I was going to say, that's the thing I didn't give you in the intro. You spent tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands now on your edu- Nine, on your property yeah. education. So I think yeah. that that shows how serious 50, we are about property. Yeah, but the, but okay. then it's the action piece, right? You get educated and then you take action. And that's where a lot of people fall over. They're like, oh, wow, this is so big. It's so confusing. So hopefully I'm going to help distill a couple of myths today. Um, and we also got a sensational. Are we ready? Are we going to the poster or do you want to chat? People, people uh, want us to go. Always be yeah. buying. Okay, let's let's run this little, uh, little thing here because this is sensational. I love... Uh, that he's gone all out <laughs> so that's I think we what need this is start. i think we need that to start though like i don't it just kind of like it's very very high energy and now i'm just like i gotta go i gotta get pumped i gotta be you know i gotta step okay shit okay shut up. okay Jesus i don't know i, I just right. i yeah Man, I was Tom Cruise. I needed to jump on a lounge or I don't know, do something. Like, I'm in love. Like, anyway, I'm in love with property. So, we, I'm in love with the property okay. data deep dive and just property in general. It's not going to be just about the data. So, for those that are like, oh, you know, data smarter, it's not just going to be about that. That is a quick no. component. We're actually going to look at a property that is, is still on the market mm-hmm. as of, I don't know, a couple of hours ago, probably. So. I think, I hope so. I think it's still on the market. Six, it's been on the market six days. 
Um, and as we'll see uh, in our days on market for this property location, it's about the 20 mark. Um, so so, let's get into it, shall we? Or yes, let's matter? get into it. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is that we're starting very macro, right? We're starting really far out. We're looking at the regions. We're looking at where the flow of people is because property investment is um, one part bricks, you know, one part finance. Um, money management, um, but it's also human behavior and understanding and connecting those two pieces together. So let's have a bit of a data deep dive. And I hope this is going to actually go smoothly because I am asking my computer to do a lot. Um, one other thing to mention is that um, I'm only going to be using free tools for the majority of this. Um, there are some better um, ways to get this information through paid tools. Um, so let's jump in. This is the 20... Oh. Also, just wanted to say that, that just because we're using no, no. this, this area is an example, folks. So we're not saying that you should go and buy in this area. No. You've got to make yeah. your own decision. Um, Joe, but this is what the audience shows. So Joe's going to... This is it. Oh, go, this is, sl this slide's for you, mate. This information on this presentation and recording is general information only. It should be not taken into consideration. I spelled that People can read it themselves. Yeah, yeah. We're, exactly. we're not read lying. that. Read that. Um, and, you know, everything. People chose this suburb. I did not choose this suburb. I can neither confirm nor deny if I am buying in this suburb. However, I have found a little gem of a uh, of a property that is going to look pretty good. So what have we got here? We have Shepparton. Um, this is in Victoria. So the first lot that we're going to go to is actually, let's give you a bit of a high level understanding about Shep. So that's the, the nickname for old Shepparton. Shep. So... Um, the city of Greater Shepparton is located at the confluence of the Golden and Broken Rivers. Okay, so essentially what you need to understand you need, you is... You need dot points. I should have told you, sorry. I, mean, I know, I should have done a dot points. I don't know why I did it like this. Um, but yeah. essentially it's called the it's Golden Valley. They do a whole heap of um, fruits, agricultural industries, um, and they are pretty much the ones that are creating this delicious treat here. Um, the 50% of the population in Shepparton are focused in on employment, healthcare, social ed, uh, assistance, retail, manufacturing, and education. So that's actually a really, really good sign that we have a large majority of healthcare for this industry. Um, so the first tool that we're going to use is good old Google because to understand the macro, to understand the micro, we need to understand the macro. So let's have a bit of a bit of a look here. Um, now, what we want to do is Shepparton to Melbourne, right? We want to understand the distance between the two suburbs, uh, the two well, locations. We can. It's not a suburb. I mean, this location. Um, I mean, so are, it's a, yeah. yeah, they are suburbs as well. Um, but that's the the, the Shepparton is the SA three as well, and it's this the suburb name as well. So it's a two hour drive to Melbourne, and then if we get on the train, it's about three hours. So is that commutable? It's uh, it's it's not. Oh, I mean, I would say it is. I mean, geez, man. I mean, uh, there's people that spend there's people that spend an hour and a half going from the Gold Coast to Brisbane. There's people that spend an, two hours going from. So possibly, I mean, would you would you want yeah. to be doing that every day? Maybe not. Yeah. Um, but what 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 what's the significance that you, that you mentioned of <laughs> of the of the of, of to, to the capital city? Like, what why is that kind of is that just for context or is there anything more to it than that? Yeah, well, I guess I guess the main purpose is um, you kind of go where the money flows, um, and if you can get access, if your employees can get access to um, a employment hub like Melbourne, uh, just look at the property prices. Right, the closer that we get to our cities, the more expensive it gets. Um, but if you don't have any access to it, um, you wouldn't be able to get to one of those employment hubs. So it would most likely be a less, uh, um, you know less affordable location less affordable more affordable okay um so i've got another question here joe and i'm so okay. i'm sorry i'm potentially grilling you but i'm probably asking the questions of the audience is thinking as well but I, I see a lot of green kind of pastures like what what is like am i stealing your thunder do we need to kind of are we talking about this later in the, in the show or? yeah so we're going to, uh yeah so there there is a the, okay so good point jeffrey it's not your name. It's Jeff. It's J E F. There's, there's no. There's no Jeffrey with Jeff. Um, but yes, there is um, some uh, supply concerns in in here potentially because of all this land around the area. 
So you've got to factor that in. We need to look into the council data and understand is there what, what kind of land releases are coming out, what's getting sold, and what is happening. However, by the looks of things in this kind of area here, there's not much infill location. Let's actually go the layers over here. <clears throat> um, there is um, so in the a area. There is a Bunnings. Okay, so what am I meant to be covering off with Google? Uh, show you the distance between the city. Um, it also has an airport. So Old Shepparton has itself a little airport here. It's far enough away from the city, but it's also, you know, to not have noise issues. Um, but it's also interesting to know. So maybe they might expand that out one day to make it a fully fledged thing. Um, you can also see that they have a big train line here. Where is it gone? There it is, which heads straight to Melbourne, which we already covered it off. Now, one thing high level to look at, what I like about um, what I like about Google Maps is it kind of highlights like the key points. So the further out you get, it, it's like this is important. So we've got um, Goulburn Valley Health. So as we'll soon notice that they are big in healthcare. So healthcare is a pretty much a 100% necessary and it's government paid. Um, so really what we want to know is what's the kind of depth of the healthcare and where do the healthcare people that have the roles live and where are they putting their money? So, what, so, that, above, so we're talking employment kind of, um, am, I, am I jumping the gun a little bit? Because I, I, I can't. No, 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 we can, we can asking, jump to it. I'm asking yeah. the Joe questions here. What, um, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, all good. Um, so one thing to, to kind of identify as well is if there are any kind of attractions. So this is really good for Google. You just click on attractions. You find out what's going on in the area. And it also helps you understand like, where is the where are um, yeah where is it more likely that people are going to be more interested? Satellite view helps you uh, cut things out. So for me, I'm not going to invest in this triangle here because this is industrial area. See these towns, see these suburbs and these locations in here. No one is going to want to live in between a refrigerator and a motor mechanic and a door, uh, you know, whatever door repair business. So I'm trying to cut things out of my suburb research so I can identify where I should be buying, right? Remove the stuff off my plate. So what's left is the nuggets. Um, cool. So let's quickly have a quick snapshot overview. Now, this isn't pretty. It's a bit of an ugly, it's a bit of an ugly chart, but I didn't have time to make it look pretty. Um, uh, so a big thing to re uh, notice here is the employment, as I said, is about 50% for these industries here. Um, being in healthcare is a really good sign. It, it, it shows that there um, is a good potential there. And it's more so than the state, uh, the, the state average. If I zoom, do I need to so zoom? So where, 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 where are we getting this? Is this ABS data, Joe? Or? This is ABS data, sorry, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. So ABS this data is, that tells us... 2016 data, I imagine. Correct, correct. So this yeah. will have changed. So, so, so I've got a, I've got a question because I'm, 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 I want to be able to make sure that people can can do their own. Like, because I think it's important if, if you're going to go out there and these are the kind of things that you should be considering and, and all that, I, I suppose. But is there a way um, aside from waiting for, for the census to come out, census data to come out probably um, early 2022? Is there another way to to check on? Um, is there other sources of data? That's a hard question. Yeah, um, there are uh, um, places, I, I, I'm like firms, data firms that run this kind of analysis and they're able to do that. That is obviously yeah. going to be paid data to be able to find that stuff. So um, if it's really, really important to you and you think that the suburb has drastically changed, absolutely. You're spending $350,000. It would be worthwhile asking them for a report on what the employment demographic looks like in this area. 100%. That's a good point, Jeff. Yep. Um, cool. So, so this is something to be aware of. So if I saw a whole heap of, um, you know, if it was just – actually, here's a good point. Um, if it's a one-horse town, right, if we just saw mining as a massive – as a massive green and that's all there was, then I wouldn't be stick. I would be steering clear of here. But what you're seeing here is a big section made up of healthcare, retail, manufacturing, agriculture from agriculture. a manufacturing standpoint, it's pretty on point. Agriculture, Education. forestry, and fishery. People need to eat. People need food. People need uh, stone fruits. They need pear. 
um, but it's a diverse industry. So that's what we're trying to look at here. We're trying to look at the diversity of um, industries. So if it's just one supporting in place, like if it was all mining or all retail, I might be a little bit scared. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. So this is a population forecast. Um, again, this is some um, ABS data. Um, I've just pulled it all together to make it look pretty. Um, this, this suburb, this location is currently at 69,857. That's an overall population of where it's at now. In the next, until 2036, from 2016 to 2036, it's going to grow 27.9% in population, which is not nothing. That's, that's a lot more people to the area. Um, so that's going to be a 1.24% growth year on year, which is just slightly above what the kind of average is of like 1, 1. 1.1, 1, that kind of thing for a, a suburb. So it's it's something to kind of ping on your radar. I can hear the skeptics saying, oh, there's, uh, there's, there's that many people, there's, um, there's 20, th there's what, 13,000 people moving to Logan in the next, uh, in the next 12 or 18 months show. What, 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 why are we, and, and, and this is happening in the next 20, what, 20, or well, from 2016. So, I mean, I, yeah, I know it's, it's, it sounds 27, 28% sounds impressive, but yeah, I'm just, I'm looking at those numbers, but I suppose it, it then comes down to supply and then, which we're going to talk about though. Exactly. 100% man you got to you got to watch that supply if you know Logan has 10 million people coming to the place but if Logan is going to have all this supply coming on the market to soak all of that up I would rather 10 people going to an area that can only hold one than you know an area that has 100,000 people that can hold 200,000 right it just and doesn't I'm, make I'm sense sorry, I'm sorry to pick on Logan like insert any area insert insert St. Mary's yeah, we'll put whatever name you want put, like put whatever suburb you want to put there sorry if switch that. throw that in there sorry Braden. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to go through is some of the free tools that I'm using today. I am using some paid tools here as well. So we're going to cover off those things. Uh, I need to get that location score picture up as well. So anyway, let's let's bring this stuff back, right? Let's bring it back and identify what we're going to actually be looking at here. So like any market, we want to understand what we've been talking about here, the supply and the demand. So days on market is a metric that we want to track. And essentially what that is, is how long it takes for a property to sell. Um, so what we're looking at here is listing from an unconditional contract um, to, sorry, from listing to an unconditional, uh, to a unconditional contract, which pretty means you much you have to buy the property, you owned it. You can't really get that under 20 days because there is, is pest in building, there are reports. So if you've got a market, Ah, uh, I've done my, I've done these words around the wrong way. So <laughs> lower days on, yeah. You should have said it to me, Joe. I would have, I would have proofed it for you because, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He's, I should have said very, it. A me. very cold, a very cold market apparently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Fix it on the uh, spot. Yeah, this is terrible. Sorry, guys. That's no, all right. Okay. Anyway, right. you want, <laughs> let's just remove them entirely. This is live as well. So, you know, that's a good sign, I think. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is see a trend of the days on market going out, you know, going down over time, over a period, because this really helps us understand um, how how long things are getting soaked up um, and how long they are on the market. Inventory as well. Inventory is calculated dividing the current listings, so what's on the market by sales volume, so how many properties are actually sold. So it's what's on the market by how fast they're selling. This is going to tell us how much of stock is left there. So if that, that number is really high, let's say it's at 10 months, that means you've got you know, 100 listings and you've only got 10 sales. So that means it's going to take 10 months of that demand to sell through that. What we would rather in a hot market is having that a lot lower. So you can see that um, 30 listings and 10 of them are selling, that means there's only three months of inventory left on that market. So that three-month mark is kind of a hot market. Once it goes below three, um, it becomes quite difficult to get in. Like it becomes really, let's maybe it's that two, maybe Kent Lardner, you're on here. I'm sure you're going to poke, poke your head in because we're going to be running through your platform as well, the amazing free tool. Um, okay, cool. Let's jump into high high yields. We want to be paid. Um, we can really want to get a property can, can that's can going to. Ask a question though about that uh, about that metric that you talk about there. 
What, what about those? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of be a little bit devil's advocate here. So sorry in advance, Please. Joe. No. Um, okay. You heard me after. Don't pull any punches, yeah. mate. We're here to learn. Pack. So, so what about those people that say, oh, your yeah, data's great, but if you're waiting for this kind of, I don't know, to be under free, have you, have you already missed the boat? Because then haven't you already kind of seen like the horses somewhat bolted? I'm, I mean, I, I've kind of got my views on that. I'm sort of on the fence a little bit about it, but, um, but how do you kind of, when somebody said that to you, what, what do you, what do you come back with? What do you, what are your thoughts on that? So one of the things that we want to track is the trend over time. So a lot of what you can get, like a lot of what's freely available is just at this point in time, right? But what you really want to be doing is pull it like, so I, I, I kind of look at property data in a different way and want to try and access the trends so I can start to see when the days, the days on market start to trend down and, and also watch what the inventory is doing and also watch what the vacancy rates are doing watching what's in the building pipeline so um you want to have that chart over a period and overlay them on top of each other to see where you've got a point in time where it says okay the market's starting to warm up a little bit i think now is my opportune time but again i didn't want to go into paid data i wanted to show like um high level overview of the free stuff that you can get access to but that would be needing to pull apis and um, getting data from other sources and stuff Yep, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. And, cool. and, and vacancy I'm rates. Also, yep. Sorry, okay. Yeah. We'll talk about <laughs> let's, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. We so, all know what vacancy rates are. We all know what they are. Under two, uh, the higher above two, the harder it gets. The harder um, it gets. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. Okay. Again, on the fly. This slide should be on this. This slide should be on the inventory one. So, um, yeah, this should be. That should be that. So we want our inventory at that kind of two two level. Anything less than three months to, yeah. No, I, th I think, oh, yeah, yield. Okay, yield and vacancy rates. Okay, yeah. so you're talking about Oh, sorry, yield. no, we're talking vacancy rates. Actually, sorry. We, oh, God, this is turning into a sh... No, a, no, no, a no, no. I, I mean, But no, it's the, it's, we're talking vacancy rates as well. So vacancy rates um, of how long things are on the market. Let's, let's, let's storm through this thing and then we can start getting into practical stuff. Um, what we want to identify here is the building approval pipeline as well. See what you've, is supplied. You've got a, you've got a Mario there as well. Sorry, man. But I know. You see that? Cool. I thought people would like that. Yeah, I like um, <laughs> um, Guys, throw any questions that you have and we can, we can build them up over time. If I'm going too slow, let me know. If I'm going too fast, let me know because... I've got a lot more, like not too many slides, but I wanted to cover this stuff off because I think it's important. Understanding the supply and understanding the demand. So um, supply is very much on the building approval pipeline. Um, so we want to understand what projects are coming online, uh, what have been approved by can council and what's going to affect the next six to 18 months and beyond. So if you've just had, like we'll see in Shepparton, a big supply of houses, what does that mean for your property? Cool. Okay. Now, this is this is um, something that I like to call the wheel of wealth. Now, speaking of Steve McKnight, Jeff is going to notice this little um, question, this little statement here. What we're trying to do here is buy the best property in the best location at the best price for the buying brief that you have. So what that looks like is purchasing the property under market value. And Jeff, I know how much you love that term, but it's finding an opportunity that isn't... Um, is in, in is in an inefficient marketplace. So there are yeah. opportunities. That's what makes property investing great. I don't. I don't think you can buy something under market because the market value is what it is on that day. If if the property sells for five hundred thousand, then that's that's the that's the market value. Like that's I mean, I mean if it's if it sells for six hundred thousand in a week's time, then I mean yeah. But I mean yeah. I don't. Know. What anyway, if it, I think... Yeah, but what if it goes to a different market? What if you're not buying in the right market, right? It's a different marketplace. So you're going to get a different price for a different marketplace. So if you're getting yeah. like, if you have a relationship with an agent and you're going directly to them, maybe that's a different marketplace than you're not playing in the domain and real estate.com marketplace. Which just means you, you got go. a crap, crap real estate agent selling your property, I, just, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it does. yeah, it does. It does. Um, okay, cool. We want cash flow and we want to um, potentially have a value add if we have the time and resources and energy to be able to do that, depending on what it is. It's all focused around actually identifying a growth location. What I like about this is the wheel of wealth. The bigger the growth gets, the faster the wheel spins, the more of these things that you add on, the 
faster it spins. I love the momentum, right? Momentum builds. Whew. Okay, we're 27 minutes in. I thought we would be 10 minutes in at this point. So, okay, I'm going to talk really quickly about the um, uh, net internal migration. Now, this isn't a report I made. This was made by PropTrack by a um, someone at realestate.com.au. So one of the big things to identify here is COVID has disrupted the status quo, blah, blah, blah. People are leaving the cities. They are leaving in droves. Um, we've got negative 17,796 people, negative 18,191. Look at how many people are going to Queensland. It is absolutely mental. Now, I know this is a shepherd and I know this is a shepherd and post, but um, it is it's very interesting to be able to see this playing out. Now, thing, I see this. I would, yeah. The thing that I would like to see, though, Joe, and that is oh, probably yeah. isn't here, is I'd like to see the 10 year kind of thing on this. And, and, and kind of, okay, this is net internal migration, but what is the actual change? So this is just only internally, right? So just because, yeah. I don't know, 17,000 people, and that is, I mean, even 18,000 in Victoria, you're talking, I don't know, you're talking 0. 0.0, you're talking a rounding error. So, yeah. I mean, I, 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 to me, that's not, and, and, and the other thing about this is people are moving to WA. I mean, but WA, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, yeah, anyway, I'll let you People are moving to WA. People are moving to WA. But, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a great indicator, but yeah. Yeah. And it's very high level, right? We're only talking about states. It doesn't go into the details. So that is, uh, this is just reinforced by this information here. Um, so we're actually seeing, these are all the capital cities. Look at it just drop. So, okay. There you go, Jeff. There's your decade average. There's your yep. decade average of people, uh, migration movements. Perfect. Yep. Um, and then you can just see it's crazy dropped from um, from that period. But what I like here, we'll get rid of our little silly heads, um, um, is this. Region so what we can Queensland. see here, regional Queensland, Brisbane, these guys have got a whole heap of people. Last year, taking advantage of the remote workability, many opted out for a sea change or sea tree change. 43,000 people exited the cities in uh in favor for regional areas. So we're starting to see 18,000 people leave Victoria and 13, well, 14,000 essentially move out into the regions. So what, what regional did, you, did you find it? What, what's the find as regional Queensland? Are we talking to Bulcher here or I just, uh, I just, I just, like, I just, be like, if, right? yeah. if uh, Tatum's still watching. But. Yeah. So um, regional Queensland. Um, yeah. We'd need to look it up how they, how That's they right, yeah, factored yeah. that in. Anyway, migration has driven increased price growth in these regions as well. So you can see. Now, this um, this report, I was going to honor it because um, because I, I got so much information out of it. So I'm going to pull the name of what it is now um, so I can do just that. Uh, it is called Prop Tracks Regional Australia Report 2021, and it was done in November 24th. So this is the, the data on here is from... Um, is from um, it, it varies, um, but the report was made in November. So the, the cities within one to two hours commuting distance of a major capital, perhaps taking advantage of both the ability to maintain office connections one or two days a week and the amenities. So that's something to factor in. Um, now, this is all well and good. Um, one interesting trend that I found was that people are opting in for more bedrooms. So that's interesting too. Anyway, this is just, um, this is all just, you know, fun stuff. I need to continue on because otherwise we're going to run out of time. And I don't want to run out of time, people. Um, so let's do suburbs trends. So now we need to understand the macro of the area, um, the, the SA3 level. So this is suburb trends. This is created by our good friend, Kent Lardner. He provides me with a lot of data and information, helps a lot with, um, with my research. Um, so you go here. This is a free tool. Like he is a legend. So what we're looking at here is something called the statistical area three, which is a government definition, which goes over an entire sub, uh, an, an entire location. So what what I like to do first is go to um, is actually to read this. Um, so can it is a run, strong. Can you make it? Can you make it a bit bigger, man? Oh, like just a bit, sorry, yeah. man. Sorry. that's all right. No, I'm just if I'm no. having, having trouble seeing it. Thinking of yeah, the people. Yeah. yeah. Here you go. Um, so you read through this, Shepparton is considered a strong seller's market with conditions relatively stable. They have solid average monthly sales of 56 average a month. So that's that's not nothing, but, you know, volume wise. Um, days on market is 43. And this has decreased from 60 12 months ago. So there is a massive decline 
in days on market. The median house price is 369 and using the SA3, blah, blah, blah. Read all of that when you get the chance. But what we want to look at is what is the uh, what is the housing inventory there as well? So as I said, remember up here, we want wherever it was up in here, we want our inventory levels to be low. This is the, the balance between supply and demand. And it has started to kind of pick up here, um, which is interesting, but it's still at a very low point. And this is for the entire region of um, Shepparton as a SA3. Okay. House price listings have been dropping quite a lot over the year. And like, um, that's... Interest, interestingly, though, Joe, as, as they've slightly picked up, you can see that the uh, the inventory also increased. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's probably maybe just a bit convenient. Well, so. well, no, this no, it's it's very convenient because it's saying the supply, which is inventory, uh, which is housing listings, um, coming on the market is may not be as met by the buyer demand, right? Because the this is going up, but the demand isn't matching it. But the price has gone from 300000 to 385000 So that's pretty bloody interesting. Have a look at our house trends, and we can start to see vacancy rates. This is below 0 0.29. This is a, uh, I'm going to say, a um, cr almost crisis <laughs> vacancy. Like sub 1% is ridiculous. Um, to be able to get a rental in this property... Uh, in this location is crazy. So under one, one these are these are crazy, crazy numbers that you should expect. I think a balanced market is around that kind of three, four percent um, for your vacancy rate. So that means you can easily get a um, uh, someone to rent your property. But what's interesting about this is that um, these people are people that are coming to this location are going to be saying, you know what, I am sick and tired. I'm going to go to the, I'm sick and tired of going to these open homes, 20 people just doing it and me not getting an option. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rent, I'm just going to buy a property. Let's just go to the bank instead of the real estate agent and find a, and then get a loan and get a property. So that's what kind of is a good indicator on price growth as well. Let's have a look at a bit of a high level overview as well. So we've got our, um, exactly this, our listings, they have dropped from 12 months ago. Uh, sorry, wait, wait, wait housing inventory three months ago, it is trending down. So remember, trend is your friend, people. Three, two, one point six. Very interesting. Now, now, now 2.24 though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah so, it's, so it's trended down, yeah. but, but, but it's trended up. down. So have we already missed the boat on this location? Now, again, I haven't, I haven't gone, been researching this area for the most amazing amount of time. So, um, you know, people, and, we, we did this thing a week ago, not even a week ago. So, um, so I haven't been able to, yeah. So um, vacancy rates, there it all is there. Uh, what I'm also going to cover off is our infrastructure in the area. So let's cover that off here. Um, this, again, go to this website, infrastructurepipeline.org. Again, I think Ken actually taught me, showed me a bit of a run through of this one. So what we've got here is all the infrastructure projects that are going on. Now, $50 million, um, $100 million, that's a pretty substantial bit of infrastructure. So let's see what is going on around. So we've got, oh, wow, I didn't see this one before. $2.4 billion. That is crazy. Energy project in New South Wales slash Victoria. So wherever that area yeah. is, that's a ridiculous. Um, so... Let's have a look around. This is going it's, to be it's kind, of, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, though. But yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but people are going to have to live somewhere when they're doing this project. So, is that going to be the the time to buy? But where is this project as well, and what is it? Detailed planning. Okay, great. So, yeah, I don't know if you're going to make that thing just yet. So, I'm not going to throw my eggs into one basket. Let's have a look here. We've got 324 million dollar road planning. Okay, great. Great, we're going to get some increase there. Shepparton, what's going on with you guys? Oh, we have a, a $400 million rail extension announced. Okay, that's fine. What about here? Okay, we've got $340 uh, 14 under, delivery. under delivery. They're actioning that. Now, um, from the research that I've gone through, they're actually building a massive um, road network to get 
and road uh, rail and road network to get people into the city faster from this area. So a lot of the regions in Victoria are getting smashed by all this government funding. $1 billion has been announced. We've got um, under procurement. So you really want to make sure that you're getting the projects that are funded, but also remember that this is a long-term burn. This is not going to be something. So here's the, you know, here's the, you know, shepherd and upgrade, $400 million. Is that going to make prices go crazy? Um, is it going to drive millions of people there? No, it's not. It's going to be a long, long-term burn, but it's good to know that they're putting money behind this. So they believe in this town. <clears throat> um, okay, cool. I have, yeah, got to be quick. Got to be quick. Okay. Walk score. Fantastic. Um, it gives you a bit of an overview. So now we're going to start digging into the area a little bit more. So again, where are some of the places that people want to live? Most because it's, commu it's a little bit more commutable. Let's have a look here. So this is really handy. Walk score is very good for like high level, high, high level overview, but um, then a direct um, location. Once you've found the exact house, it'll tell you the location score for that house. So it's pretty useful there. Um, cool. Moving on to microburbs. Guys, microburbs is one of the most underrated platforms um, that there is. Now, we're going to start looking and researching our um, location down to um, Shepparton. So where the heck should we be buying? Um, what do we use? What do we do for microburbs? We're going to have a look where families want to live. So where do families want to live? This is a this is um, a pretty high score. It's not so people want but to. Isn't is isn't that right near the um where was the where was the commercial kind of area like the was that out to the I don't know, I'm just I'm just, I'm just overlaying yeah. so yeah, the same so, well, family score is quite high right near where they got their garage. I don't know. Yeah, well, you, you've also got to think of percentage of like how many houses are actually in there. So if there's 100, if there's 50 houses in there and there's families living in it, then it's going to get a higher ranking than somewhere here that's got a, like 300 people in it, if you know what I mean. Yep, yep. Um, okay. So I, I, you can kind of dig into the data for days, but what interests me the most is our affluence score. So this is where we look at public housing. So public housing is a very good thing. I'm not trying to knock public housing at all. It's something that we need in this country to service um, some of those that are less fortunate. However, it does, it has been seen to affect property prices. Um, so it's something as a consideration. So let's look at where that is within this area. So we're starting to see a lot of red up here. There's none in here, which is interesting, none in the industrial estate um, and then none in this, what's that? They is that a, yeah, that looks like some area there. Um, but um, you can see, so when you're looking at a place, it's always good to look at what's around it as well. You don't want to be like this place here, right? You've got barely any, oh no, that's 15%. That's actually quite a lot. Um, but anything here, whereas it's sandwiched in between, so it's pretty much the same, it's bucketed in the same thing. But I, I would, wouldn't you say though? I mean, because I, I'm, I almost take a contrarian view. Then, of course, you have to actually. I would, I would visit the area and make sure. But I kind of, I mean, I don't know who's done the re. I know it's probably White House or whoever it is has done this research. But I, I, I'm not sold that it actually. I mean, they they said that it underperforms and all that. But I, I think there's opportunity there. I mean, of course, you have to, you have to. Re there's, there's risk, of course. So, but yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah. I think there's opportunity you, everywhere, mate. There's there's absolutely yeah. opportunity everywhere. But do you want to yeah. go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna yeah I'm not gonna argue the point. I think um I think if you're looking for like long term growth, like uh, yeah, I'd rather have a an obvious choice rather than having to try and pick a pick a winner out of like a an area that is not as attractive. And we want to go where owner occupiers want to go because they're the ones that drive the value. Um, but we also want renters in our area as well. So what we're starting to see here, guys, is a bit of a bit of a pocket location for some places. So we're ruling this place out. We've cut this place off up here. Now, this is just generalization um, at the moment. Um, we've also got Suburb Trends, which has this awesome demographic tool, which tells you the social index of the area. So you can have a bit of an idea. Um, and also um, what we can do here. Um, is also look at all the SA1s, which is a break, even deeper dive into the areas. So we can see the areas here, how much public housing there is. So this place with 45%, are you going to want to go there? 
Now, um, also factoring in what type of asset locate, what kind of asset is in that location too. So that's super handy. Um, yeah. So really what we're going to want to do is be close to the action um, and be along an area where, so these areas down here are looking very wholesome at the moment. Um, so there might be some opportunities in here, up here, um, but not up in here and not up in here for me right now. Um, so now what we need to do, and I'm wary of time and I'm wary of uh, everyone's... Um, hey, you smashed me. There's so many, so many things you just thrown at the... Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we want to get through to this. So we, now we want to dig into the details, right? So is Shepherd in an area to purchase in? That is now up to you guys to discern. Um, that is completely ready to go. Now, what I want to do is purchase in an area. I want to purchase the asset that everybody else is purchasing, if that makes sense. What, do you want to buy um, five bedroom houses? Do you want to buy a five bedroom house when the only 20 of them are transacting? Maybe, maybe not. If there's an opportunity there, absolutely do it, right? But I want to kind of look at what is the typical type of asset? I think I've made a little slide for this as well. Yeah. The typical asset, and <laughs> what a stupid slide. <laughs> the typical asset here is the three bedroom market and then the four bedroom market a little bit. So for me, I'm like, okay, cool. I want to buy what everyone else is buying because owner occupiers drive the value and I want to buy where they're buying. Does that make sense, Jeff? Like, do you under, does it, do I need to ex, expand on why? No, no, it makes 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 sense. I mean, I think it's it's good to explain. So the reason you you you'd, you'd want to do that is because otherwise, then if you if you're if if you're trying to buy, um, I don't know the five better. I mean, you you look there. The days on market is is um is, is is a lot is a lot higher. And the reason that's the case is because there's not as many people, there's not as many bigger families these days. So who who actually mm -hmm. needs a five bedroom property? And in some yeah. some markets that, that may suit, but I mean, in this market, it's sort of seeing you, 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 it's very clear to see that there's majority of them are selling a 423 um, are in that free better, and and maybe yeah. there's potentially an opportunity. Uh, I would say value add to turn a turn a free better into a four better potentially, yep. not with all assets, which are yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Um, so uh, generally speaking, for a, for a brief over, like from a high level overview, we want to understand what the typical bedroom is, and there are there opportunities in two betters. Absolutely, you can. T I turned a two better into a three better and made a substantial f amount. A three better to a four better, yeah, absolutely. A two bedroom unit, one bedroom unit, or a three bedroom unit. No way in hell will I buy one of those in these locations because they are just not selling. And they're taking 200 days, like over six months, seven months, eight months to sell these suckers. So don't buy them there. Not financial advice, which we've already covered. However, now we want to understand what is the typical asset type in that area. So what I've done, I've gone to domain. I think I can. Oh, no. shit. Okay. I've gone to domain. I've gone to sold. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. Is that it? My recent searches. Yeah, I've gone to filtered it. I've gone houses. I've gone three bedroom houses because that's what we want to purchase. Um, and I want to understand what is the value that I should now be buying at, right? Um, we can see here, Kent Lardner, Mr. Mr. Lardner, 363 is the median. Um, we also have uh, about market trends, home loans, property price. Where's my, there's my demographic. So it's always good to confirm a couple of things. Where's my median house price? Uh, you, you should where's be a mine? suburb, um, should be a suburb, what should I call it? Um, if you go to suburb profile, should be, you know. Well, that's what that's what I'm in. I'm... Yeah. There you go. Yes, Let's have a look at the medium that they, these guys say. Oh, the, oh, what am I talking about? It's right there. I bet the audience is yelling at us right now. Yeah. Um, cool. It's right here, right? The medium three-bedroom house is 313. Okay. Now, um, this is this is the the median, not the average. So um, that kind of helps knock out any of those larger sales. However, 313,000, is that where the opportunity is? Let's understand what the typical property is in this location. So I've, I've now whittled down. I'm going to work out the price point. And really, what's my search criteria I've put here? I just don't remember what I did. Um, sold, nearby suburbs. We don't want nearby suburbs. Houses, we want houses. 50 to 500,000. So let's just like, let's just eyeball it, right? You guys, this is access that everybody has. 
Um, exclude price withheld because that doesn't help us in this case. But let's see. As of December 15, weatherboard, 307,000. Brick home, 415,000. Brick home, 440,000. Brick home, 430,000. Four bedroom. Three bedroom weatherboard, $350,000. God. Uh, 330 for this weatherboard. Um, 290 for this weatherboard. 455 for this weatherboard. Yet yeah, talk, do this, say this to yourself as you're going through them. Brick home, 480, looks very nice. Um, 405, um, three bedroom, 600 squares, all around the same kind of amount. So I'm starting to see there's a bit of a two tier market in here. We've got weatherboard homes that are doing that kind of 300, 310 ish, but our brick homes are selling at 400. Okay, that's interesting. 316, a brick home, here it is. 700 squares. Okay. That's in October. Um, and that's a brick home for 350. That's a good, that looks like a good buy. Weatherboard again, 320. Maybe, 320. maybe it's in the public housing area though, Joe. So oh, you, wanna, boom. you have to Pearl. understand. You got to understand. And then you do the research. You look in, where am I? Oh, that would be great. If it, that would be really good if it answered the question. No, it's yeah, not. It's it wasn't. Oh, it could have been. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it could have been. Um, yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm jumping the gun here. Okay, cool. So now we've started to understand that the median price is actually not 313. It's actually, um, how much was it? Like 400. So we're going to now look at like what's the, what kind of um, property well, has a better option. What you've, what you've discovered there, Joe, is, is the in potential flaw with, with median house price because it's not the mean. The median is the middle. So if, if, if you've got more, if you've got, uh, let's, I think it was 400 sales. Um, 400 sales. So let's just say you had 230 of those at the weather, weather boards. Of course, the, the middle one is going to be sort of dictated by that weather board. Um, so that's kind of where – doesn't Ken have one of those um, price segmentation? He does. Tool? Kent yep. – oh, mate, has, has, Pen, has Kent paid you? Um, that's a very good point. Um, he should, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Price segmentation, super valuable. I'm going to zoom in on this. This tells you what type of asset has been sold to help you understand the median. So again, it's kind of confirmed. Two hundred. Oh, are they? No, they're not. Are they? Oh, sorry. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Good spot, mate. So that 200 to 400. So that's probably our weatherboards. And this yeah. is probably our brick. Interesting. Now, again, our goal here is to find and identify the single opportunity for us. Um, so I am going to do something that is going to um, help us, again, remove the nonsense from our plate. And what one thing I do not want to deal with is floods. Oh, goodness. I do not want to deal with any floods. Oh, the flooding. Oh, the, the wet. Now, I have platform. I have access to the, the all the council mapping and stuff. But again, I want to show you free resources that you can use, not paid resources and in-house stuff. So um, this is the local area flood map. Oh, this Goulburn River, it floods. And it's probably not going to um, be where you want to have your investment property for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. What, is, so what, is, from, what are they saying? Is that, is that a one in a hundred flood? Is it one in a 50 year? Oh, what are they How saying many? here? Uh, this is this is called a 1% flood, which means there is a 1% chance of flood happening in any year. Okay, right. that's good. That's okay, that's a 1% flood. flood. What's this? This is again a 1%. What's this one? Um, 1%. I, I thought they were all the same, but they all look very similar. Um, so right now, remember, we've got this arterial cross here. That's how I kind of look at this area. So we've got Shepherd in here. We've got High Street and then we've got Wyndham Street. So let's go back to our map. And that looks like this cross here. So all of a sudden, I'm crossing out all of here, all of down here, all of down here. There's a bit of a cross section over here. So let's go back to this and have a look down here. So now we've got some pockets in here. We've also got a great big pocket in here that shows a bit of opportunity. Now, what's near this place? It's near the hospital. There's a lot of houses there. It's near where all the attractions are. We've got this section down here and we've got over here. And then we've got near Pol Polpla Avenue as well. Um, so we've just cut off so much of this market because there is... Um, because now it's all flooded. Now, the reason why we don't want to do this as well is cost. Like insurance can go up to like $10,000 a year. Usually insurance is like 1100 
thousand nine hundred eight. I think I'm paying like nine hundred at the moment um, for my Mel, uh, Victoria properties. Um, so yeah, you want to then. So, but this is this is good news because now we've just cut off all the fat. So now we have got some locations to know where to buy. And what do we do then? We find our typical property, our three bedroom between two hundred and fifty to five hundred, and we. Why can't, oh, I need to add the location. Shep, we're going to go here and we're going to pull up all of the properties on the market. Now, Brick Home, 380 to 400. Fair enough. Weatherboard, no, no name. Um, 350 to 380. Okay, that's an interesting. I'm going to mark that one as interesting. Um, Brick Home, 380. That's standard, standard, standard. Can 500. You, okay. Can you do a search on on domain by location though as well? Because wouldn't wouldn't it no no of... so so that doesn't help us right? Seeing a big list view. Ah, oh, here we go. Let's start overlaying this. Oh, not this one. Where are we? Where where's my thing gone? Oh, here. That's okay. that's it. My flood map plus your public housing. If you want to consider that as a, I mean. I... Okay, so here we go. Now we can start to see some interesting properties so we've already ruled this one out so we can get rid of this we, that's four hundred sixty thousand as well um now we can start to check out the properties that are in this location so 400 to 430 i don't think there's much of an opportunity there um 379 there might be something there now 365 395 530 we are starting to get some locations and you can start to see some of these weatherboard location weatherboards um in the flood zones um i'm not entirely sure the correlation between flood zone and uh um price growth but i don't think it's going to be too good now on the market in our typical price range for what we're looking for we've got a couple of properties down here which are showing me a bit of interest so oh okay it's right near a pet roomy <laughs> where is uh you're right near the bunnies, mate. You've, you've got here we go. Got this one. We got this one. So this is looking pretty interesting. A two two hundred and ninety for three hundred ten, but again, it's a weatherboard. So it's on a, that kind it's of on a main ish road as well. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's a so that <laughs> I looked at that property. That's the exact same thing I thought. Um, but if we find that property, it's like it's like it's a two lane place. So it's a main road, but it's a regional main road. So um, you've got to also get on the ground with this stuff as well and know the area. Now, I have the location that I found, so I'm going to pull it up because I actually think it might have been sold already. Something, I can't find it just visually, so let me just find it here. You're, you're telling me that in the time that we've been on this live, this, this, or in the last couple of hours, this property has gone under contract or so? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> ah, damn it. It's under yeah. offer. Oh, <laughs> I wanted someone from here to buy. Keep watching. Bloody hell. Keep, keep, oh, keep. sorry. Okay. <laughs> keep the swearing down. Sorry. We're all adults here. This is a uh, MA 15 plus podcast at the moment. Oh, it's gone under offer. I was really hoping we could tell a really good story with this. Anyway, Doesn't, where is I'll it? I'll tell you what. We uh, should, we should, you should, you should. I mean, I was going to say if you, only if you're willing to buy it, okay. but you should have a, have a chat to the agent. I mean, just kind yeah, of. Yeah. So it's along Archer Street, McDonald Street. Where is it? Archer Street, oh, Bob, it? Street. There it is. There. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you see it? Am I just being silly? Have I done something? No, wrong it's with not, it's not, oh, it's probably not for sale. Is it? I mean, just just type in the address. I mean, wouldn't it just be? Yeah. Anyway, we, we okay. So it's where is Brook? Am I in the right area? <laughs> oh, uh, is that it? No. It's Sunbury. In, anyways, it's down here somewhere. Oh, yeah, McDonald Street. Oh, there it is. Brook, Brooks Ave. There oh, I did. No. Oh, to, to your, to, go to the right, Joe. Go to the right. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, you, it's, it's there. There you go. Oh, but that's no, that's the 410. Yeah, well, maybe oh, that's okay. Right. Well, that's weird. Four, so it's along, it's around here somewhere. Okay, cool. Yeah, so now we've got, we've, we've, rock we rock found rock. our location. It's under offer at the moment. Um, so that's very upsetting. Um, so, Anyway, let's just pretend it's not off the market. Now, this is a really good sign, right? This property has been on the market for six days and it's already sold. Why? Because it's at 310 and it's a brick home. The others are selling for like 400 and 430. Look at, 
so look this at, is look at the look at the size of it as well, man. Seven hundred square meters, like seven hundred. Seven, seven hundred square meters. So you could see while I was incredibly excited about this. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is um, go into RP data. So this is the only paid resource that I'm going to use um, because this really tells us some really good insights that I used to uncover the value of this property. So we search our property here, 14 Brook Brooks Avenue. I'm going to log myself in. Could you, could you see if there's a, is, is, it, is it possible to see if there's a development? Um, I mean, Archie I mean, we're going down a rabbit hole here, but. Yeah, we're going, we'll go down a rabbit hole with that. However, one thing I forgot to mention with suburb trends is the building approvals. Ken's probably yelling at me here. So one thing to notice is that we've had a hundred supply of units coming in in May, approved in May. So that is probably going to take um, a little bit of time to be soaked up. So maybe there's an opportunity, maybe it's going to start affecting over this period of where the chart might be. So it's something to factor into your research. Um, so I just wanted to go to this paid resource here. The reason I'm doing this is because they have a fantastic feature called map layers and it has you sold in the last six months in this area. So why do I want to do this? Why am I going to have to show you the paid version? Because, um, domain doesn't allow you to do that on the mapping by a period of six months. It doesn't let you do the time frame, but this does. Okay. Brook street across the road, 350,000 sold in June. Okay. That's a typical, that's a that's in June. So just just under six months. This place, 430,000. Okay, that's interesting. Um, just across the road, 300,000. Again, another, oh, okay. So this brick house, I actually had a, had a look at this. It was on the market, absolute dive. Um, not something that is renovationable in my opinion. 170,000. No, it looked like it had some like structural damage. Um, oh, okay. This property here um, is five hundred and thirty-five thousand. Yeah, so I mean, it's also is, that's a nine hundred square meter. So I wouldn't say that's that's probably not comparable. Yeah, but five hundred and thirty-five. It's not. There's not two hundred meters of, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, but yes, it's, it's, it's it, yeah. What it looks like, how it all goes, and stuff like that. So this indicates to me we've got a lot of fours in here. So if we could renovate this property. Um, then there might be some uh, um, good stuff here. So that is the um, area and the location. Now, um, what I want to do is do a deal crunch calculator on it, which is what we have in-house. Does everyone have access to our free deal crunch calculator? If yeah, you I'm don't, sure. do you, you know. You know. I'm going to put the link. Oh, put the link, mate. Put Actually, I think it's just here. Anyway, okay. get access to it. It's free. We made it. It's fantastic. Um, Go ahead. So yeah. we're, we're going to run this property through our deal crunch calculator. Oh, actually, sorry. Let's go through the property. Um, let's go through the property on. I, I was looking. I was, when, you, when you sent me the property, I was like, this, this, is, this is pretty juicy. I was, I was, I was yeah. like, geez. You're, oh. you're excited? Okay. Yeah. We need to check. Oh. This is, we need to, like, we can open the place up, remove these walls, make sure they're not load bearing. So that these... gives you a nice. If these are the best photos they're willing to take of the property, it, it looks like an absolute dumper. Well, not maybe not a dumper, yeah. but I mean, imagine that this, these are the kind of the, the the sexy photos they're taking. I'm just like, yeah, this is this is a photographer trying his best. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So look at this: new kitchen, new flooring. This is about a thirty thousand dollar renovation without um, kind of going too structural. So if we can knock the walls out, fantastic. If we need to do some structural stuff, throw in another five ten grand. Now as well, probably add an extra twenty. <laughs> yeah, maybe get rid of that thing. But this is an absolute gold. This is a gem and a half. It's a three bed brick home in a juicy location that has no flood. Very minimal. Um, that this was my buy. If I was to buy anything two days ago or a day ago or this afternoon in this area, it would have been this property. Why didn't, and hope. Why didn't we? Why didn't we buy it, Joe? I mean, bloody hell! I mean, we we could have actually. I, mean, I don't know. We could have. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, suppose I mean, you, you have to look. Yeah. Anyway, that's beside so, the point. But one thing. Okay, so this opportunity is lost. Oh, damn, Maybe. Devo. Yeah. I'd still uh, give it how a call. About, yeah, Julie priced this property. Julie priced this renovation. She scored this renovation deal and priced it up at such a low rate. Do you know who my new best friend is in Shepparton? Am I love Julie. We're going to become best friends and she's going to give me all of these type of properties before they go on the market. 
Um, obviously, it's not as easy as that. Um, but that is what you've got to look at, right? Who are listing these types of properties and how are they doing? Like if she's willing, you don't know what the, oh, no, it's under offer. So it's not even on RP data yet. Um, let's, let, let, let's keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep an eye on it because I'm curious to see what it does. I, I reckon it probably sold for about, I mean, maybe 315, 320. Yeah, I reckon maybe even 330. Like I think, um, yeah, yeah, I think that I, did, the way the market's moving for a brick house, Oh, okay. So, okay, here, here we go. How did the agent come up with their price? This is a Victoria specific thing. It's not in all states. So if you're looking in Victoria, view agent guide, they have to disclose via statement of information, what these, how they came up with this price. So I'm going to zoom in. How did Julie come up with this thing? 310 to 340. That's what she's putting out. The median price is 350 in Shepparton. She used these properties. So, Use these, check on these properties. This one was purchased in August. This one was purchased in November. Is this a comparable property? Like if she's gone all weatherboard for these comparable sales, then maybe it's um, an opportunity there um, to see, you know. Yeah, so that tells you how she came up with the price. And that's a weatherboard. How is that weatherboard at 300 and whatever comparable to that brick home? It's not comparable. Come on, Julie not comparable but maybe she you know wanted to get it so i don't know whatever the situation is but i'm not discrediting you julie i'm sure you're lovely but it's just not comparable so um <laughs> there you go maybe pro okay. maybe it's price wise it's comparable rather than the property itself <laughs> yeah maybe that's what it is what is what has been comparable okay so the next thing that we want to do is run this thing through a renovation calculator now, why a renovation calculator is because we want to crunch deals very, very quickly to identify where the potential is. And now, maybe, Jeff, is this the time to talk about our brand new surprise, our little thing, I, I, I don't our know little announcement? I've, I, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's probably not a bad time, but it, it's even, we, we, how about our, we've got to pay the bills as well. So we have other. Yeah, we'll the, we've got ads okay. to run. We've got to run the ads. But. Okay. So, it is the time. Okay. Okay. We have no, actually, not not just yet. We'll run it after the ads. We'll give you the big announcement, oh. guys, after this ad. It's like one of those cliffhangers where, you know, so you stay till make sure you come back after the ads. Um, because it's worthwhile. <laughs> We've got a great announcement, yeah, guys. Oh, yeah, is, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The sponsor. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Right, let's bring our sponsor on. Let's hope I got the right one. Mr. Steve Polisi. The amazing thing with commercial property investing is that in most cases, it's cash flow positive from day one, which means that you can drive those profits towards paying down the debt. There are instances with commercial property investing where you can actually have the property pay itself off over 10 years, which is absolutely crazy. With commercial property, you get massive net yield, so you can expect anywhere between 6 to 10%. And as we've seen in the current boom, these properties not only provide large cash flow, they do certainly grow wildly in value too. Now, with big rewards comes some risk, and this is why you should de-risk your investment as much as possible. And the way you do that is with expert due diligence. And this is why we highly recommend people hire professionals to help you along in your investing journey. Steve Polisi of Polisi Property is one such expert. Being a chartered mechanical and structural engineer in a past life, Steve draws on his analytical and mathematical skills to do that expert due diligence for you. With six years experience in the space, Steve has over 1,200 property transactions on his belt. He's the guy you want in your corner, crunching the numbers and finding the best properties in the best locations, along with ensuring that you avoid the mistakes. Steve has actually even written the book on commercial property investing in Australia. And not only is it a bestseller, I believe it to be the most comprehensive in commercial property investing on the market today. He's been generous enough to give us a massive discount for our audience of 50%. So use the code OZPROP, click the link below, get a copy today and start learning and getting on your commercial property investing journey. Hey, there we go. That's a, um, yeah, it's a, we've even got the news that are coming out. There may be a special offer. So make sure you're, <laughs> there's going to but, but no. Maybe a special um, offer for a Steve Felici book. Yeah, we, we were going to get him on to have a chat about commercial regionals, but I, I, I didn't want to. I, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was. Joe just said he prepared so much for this, so 
but but Joe, I want to throw I want to throw it over you. What what is this big reveal? What is this big announcement? I, I want to kind of want to go get an idea. Well, <laughs> well, the big announcement so, is okay. Well, I don't even know how to say it. To so say it. Um, I didn't even plan this, but I've been too busy planning uh, the the uh, the presentation. So well, what I wanted us, to say, show. guys, don't tell us. what? Show us, don't tell us, or do do both. Show us. So what we need here, guys, is a um, renovation calculator. Now, one of the big things is I've actually created a renovation calculator. I've created a lot of things. I've been working hard in the background. Um, I've also created a business behind this. So I am now leaving my wonderful position at uh, at a company. Your, 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 <laughs> um, your, your, your prop tech company? Law, law, my law tech legal, legal, yeah. To start my own business. So I have created a company called Property Principles, which is all about a buyer's agency to find off, off market, pre-market, on market, amazing property investment opportunities throughout Australia. We have a property plan. Um, we have a property purchase. Those are the two things that we do. Um, we also do them very uh, well. I, I've had some success with my portfolio and my friends and family that I've been buying for. So that is the exciting news. Joe Tucker is leaving. I think I might change this picture. I don't really like it. Um, <laughs> I don't really hey, like it. That's the 80s. And, and congratulations. The, yeah. um, um, as a as a part of this, um, I have teamed up with our very own Steve Polisi um, of, of Polisi Properties, um, also Jordan Diong, who is our head of strategy here, and we are going to take on the property market um, well, by he's, storm. He's property principles. So, I mean, when you say ours, property it's not all principles. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Property property principles. That's the that's the business name. So that is the news, guys. So I'm just just putting it out there. That is what's happening. Um, how is this going? Uh, well, let's get rid of this. How is this going to affect the group? It's not at all. Um, the group is a you know a part of my and Jeff's thing. Um, it's not connect. It's not a part of this business whatsoever. Jeff is not going to be. Um, Jeff's not in the business with me. You couldn't He's afford. Not you couldn't, I could not definitely not afford. I definitely yeah, can't yeah. afford you, mate. Especially after that, but didn't you have a couple of tools that you were going to show us, like the equity extraction, or are we not? We're not showing that. Well, I just wanted to celebrate, right? Like this is exciting news for me, Jeff. Like, give me, well, uh, us, give me five so. seconds. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> no, but that's cool, man. Like, or something, but yeah. I should have. Yeah, I have a sip of beer. So, cheers, everyone. You guys have been a great part of this. Um, Empty, this journey. Yeah. Cheers, mate. You've been a big part of this journey as well, mate. Um, yep. so super exciting for, for me, um, super exciting for the opportunities that, that are out there. And, um, I think it's going to be a, a job well done. So on that, let's keep providing value because this is not going to be a Joe flog fest. Um, that's not going to happen. We're not going, I'm not going to advertise on this. Flog anything, Joe. That sounds a bit, sounds a bit scary. We're not, no, we're just not going to do it. So, but thank you for all the people who are saying congrats. I appreciate that. It's really nice. Um, so why did I bring this up? Well, because I've, I've now quit and I've left my full-time job and 100% focusing on property. Um, but also, I've got a little education section here that I absolutely love. So we're going to go through education. What is a buyer's agent? You've got that there. Um, one thing here is how much usable equity that I have. I've got a calculator built in here. Um, and this is super useful. Um, so if you've got a property in Sydney that's now you know, $800,000 and you have a mortgage on it for $400,000, you have potential, potential use of, oh, that's 4,000. I'm like, wow, that's a lot. Hey, of potential 40, oh, 40, 400. So you've got a potential. So this he helps does you. Yes, he does good. Yes. I just, I just now add, add a couple of zeros. But yes, this is super useful to work out how much usable equity you actually have. So you can actually keep going and keep buying property. Um, Anyway, renovation calculator. Let's go to that one. That's what we're going to use on this deal. Oh, I keep clicking this. That's what we're going to use on this deal. Um, and one thing I've realized, like I work in a professional environment and we earn, you know, a normal salary for, for Australia, but people don't have time to go out there and buy these type of investments to do this type of research. And this is just the free research that I've showed you. I've not showed you any of the in-house stuff that I'm paying for and, and su subscribe to, et cetera. Anyway, okay, that's, I'm not going to talk about this business anymore. This is now back back to the action for us. Um, Jeff, did you have any questions about any of this? 
Oh, man. I mean, I've asked about a thousand behind the scenes. That's so okay. I, th- I think I think we're good. <laughs> no, I, 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 I was introduced. I thought there was. I mean, that calculator. I thought there was actually like um, we we're going to run some numbers, weren't we? Or, or, did we run no, numbers? No, no, we are. No, no, that's, that's what I'm doing. Oh, so I'm, I'm grabbing. I'm grabbing the purchase price of this house. So let's just say in a market that's as hot as it is, she's done it at three ten. Let's just say three twenty. I think we're going to be all happy with that. Um, so I base this off the hundred and thirty five percent rule. So 100% of the purchase price, 5% acquisition, renovation cost 10%, holding cost four, selling cost four. I want a minimum profit of 12%. That is a total of 135%. So this is a quick deal crunch to be like, is there an opportunity here or am I wasting my time? Okay. So the property price is 320,000. One, two, three. And what do you reckon for? Could we get it? There was 550 in there. There was there was 420, but it didn't look like it was fully renovated. If we put you know, a substantial amount into this. Could we get it to 450? Um, I mean, I was, I was, I was going to even fry there. I mean, we've, we've spoken, I, I, I think the whole sort of, uh, in terms of trying to throw a rule around it, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that, it, I think it kind of is, is very property. I mean, would you spend, how, how much do you suppose you're spending on a property? I mean, that, well, this that's is it. Of, this is, this is the rules, right? This yeah. is like quick high level overview and it's definitely going to fluctuate and people are like I have to spend 10% on a renovation. Well, yeah, at the moment we're spending 32 grand, which is probably what you'd spend to make this place nice, but if you need to remove walls and stuff, maybe, maybe do you have issues with the roof? Are there issues anywhere else? Then we need to jump up this price a little bit. So, we've got the slider in there, but what I'm basing this off of is if the purchase is 320 at the 135% rule we need a we need to make four hundred and thirty two thousand. So based on this, this actually might have some legs to it, right? So we look at our acquisition cost around sixteen thousand, renovation cost thirty two thousand, holding cost that. We're not going to be selling this thing, so we put no. Where's no? Select no here, and then it tells us our selling cost and how much we're going to be profiting. How much minimum profit do we want? We want minimum thirty eight thousand. Yes, we can well, achieve you, that. You probably need to adjust that and say equity because if you're not selling, then there's there's no you don't make a profit until you sell the, until you liquidate the assets. Oh, yeah, very good point. I'm sorry, but I'm being a bit No, no, that's a good point. I appreciate that. Um, so if we get it at four hundred and forty thousand, we have total um, equity, as Jeff would say, of sixty thousand dollars after because spending. This is where you need a link to to link into your usable equity. You see. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I well, that's it. Yeah. So now we're like, okay, cool. This is a renovation project that has some legs and we're going to do our next phase of due diligence. Then we've got our due diligence deal crunch calculator here that you guys all have access to because you all subscribe to our newsletter and you get access to it. So let's run through it. 441, two, three. We have a 20% deposit here. We put 30, what was it? 32,000 in our renovation um, we have other purchasing costs, legals, I, pest and building. Can I, can I stop you on the 20% deposit? I mean, who's putting down a 20% deposit, Joe? Like it's, it's, I mean, I'm not saying we should or shouldn't, but why, why aren't we kind of maximizing what we can potentially borrow? Well, why don't we put down an, a uh, 22%, no, a, uh, uh, a 12%, 12, 12 deposit, yeah. Yeah. which maximizes Absolutely. something if you speak to your broker and they'll tell you all about it. But then we're going to have to pay 4500 in LMI. But that lowers, if we'll see here, the cash down. So if we go back to what it was, we're going to have to put down 117000 If we go back to the 12%, we only have to put down 92000 So that makes it quicker to get into the market. So um, maybe, Jeff, you want to um, – no, no, don't worry. Um, okay, cool. Cash down. So how much cash are we actually needing for this deal? 92000 How much is going to be funded by the bank? 286000 Um Total equity, total required, three hundred and seventy-eight thousand, um, and that's going to give us an equity uplift of thirty-three thousand nine hundred, which is that minus the end value, min- that minus that. It's, uh, just, that. it's just the debt that- minus. Wait, mm-hmm. uh, equity uh, three hundred and twenty minus two hundred eight. So it's just the the purchase price. How much yeah. equity we have in the purchase price over that? Um, but what we really care about is the post-reno 
um, under market equity. So if we can get something under market, if we can get the post renovation, that looks like 153,000. So you need to fiddle around with these numbers and make sure that they're correct. Um, is this area going to have 7% growth? We didn't actually go through the growth calculate. We didn't go through the growth metrics of this. So maybe let's just say 5%. So that's going to grow at 16,000 in one year, plus the renovation that we've just done and increased our equity because the value is now 440,000. We've then spent 32,000 and um, it's that amount, right? We, and then we've got our four metrics, that five metrics that matter. Our gross rental yield is 5.44% because our rent is going to be 335, which we pulled from um, rental estimate. No, 365. So we've got a rental estimate for CoreLogic RP data and they're yeah, going I, to pull I, I think I think upside, you could even, I mean, I, I think 370 is realistic. I, I don't think it would rent. Well, once for it's free. a nice reno, absolutely. Yeah, but I don't think it would rent for free. I think it would rent for 370. I think you're sorry. You're agreeing with me. My bad. Yeah, man. I'm for it. So that's why we won multiple scenarios, right? So let's just say it's gone up to 380. Heck, what does that mean for our bottom line? It means I've got, if it's at 365, I've got $2,000 cash flow. If it's at 380, that means I've got three thousand dollars cash flow seven, and seven hundred bucks a year. See, I mean, if we're seven hundred bucks, I mean, which breaks down. What about, do you mean seven hundred? No, no, this is three thousand dollars a year. Yeah, yeah, that's what, an extra seven hundred on top of the loan. If you're, if you're, oh down yeah, ten bucks a week. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, that's great. So. 700 bucks for 15 bucks. And then you've got your usable equity of 65,900 to go again, which is kind of in line with our usable equity on our, uh, on our deal crunch calculator there. But obviously the numbers are a little bit tweaked. So you need to match these numbers up if you want to match them up on that. Um, so this deal, ah, oh man, it's such a, like, it's such like a, like an anti-climax seeing this. Um, it was there. It was there this morning. It was there this morning. So it was under offer. But it shows you guys. I did all of this for free. I spent. I spent a little bit of time going through high level overview, diving into the details, getting an understanding of what mattered from the metric perspective, understanding where the public housing is. More importantly, understanding where the place flooded, where the market opportunities were, and then finding a deal that was at a at a price point that I could afford to do a renovation on it that would give me instant equity, which goes back to what I said at the beginning. We purchase an undermarket value. We have cash flow that supports itself, and then we add value. That then cycles around in the growth. Call it the, you know, whatever they call it, the holy trinity. Call it the push property. I think, I think somebody else want. came up with that first, man. I, I don't think you can call it that. <laughs> no, I can't call it that. Call it, but they're all yeah. the same thing, right? Speed up the acceleration yeah. of your property property journey uh, yeah yeah I'm, I'm not so sold on these whole um these whole kind of you don't anyway, you don't right? like a you don't like a uh, like a putting something in the ground right like a um like this is it you don't like yeah, that which yeah. is well, awesome. yeah, I mean, let's, just, let's just let's just say we're going to make bloody money like what does it have to come up with yeah but anyway what I, what i wanted to say is yes the the purpose of the exercise was to kind of do a data deep dive but I think the thing, because everybody focuses on this, they focus on where they have to buy and, and, and what they should buy and all these kind of good things. I think before you even do this, you need to actually decide what the heck do you want out of property? Like, what, what is it? Because if you just go, if you let's just say you watch this and say, you look, Shepherd and looks like it ticks the boxes, um, whether it does or doesn't, whatever, you can kind of find probably hundreds of other suburbs around Australia, similar price um, points. So you can go and do that, do the same thing. But what, why, why are you actually? What are you hoping to achieve from the property? That's what you from from your property portfolio. You need to do that Man, first, I think. Well, this is one hundred percent why the business, like why I created a business around planning and data, because those are the things I don't think that we have in this industry. I don't think people are using enough data, and I love what Kent is doing. He's commoditizing the data for property space, and that's why I used a lot of his platform today because it helps so much. Um, but um, planning as well. That's why we've got a qualified investment um, advisor to do our property plans. And we create a tech platform, which I'm sure we'll start. If anyone adds me on the Facebooks or whatever, you'll see. I'll advertise my stuff there. I'm not going to do it in the group. Um, yeah. But you can see it's so true, man. People just don't plan the the future. I mean, I, I don't... 
I think you can do it yourself. To be, I mean, I'd, I'd rather sort of be open about that. Yeah. I mean, yes, there's maybe yeah. value in that thing, but um, but I yeah, agree. I'm, and that's why I'm, I made I'm, that I'm that super simple snapshot that that one the amazing um, um, Chris and his wife Lee Le were made. Um, yeah, exactly. Property plan. Um, one page up. I'm, I'm keen. Should we have you? Is that the end of the data deep dive, or should we get into questions, or what are we? Because I know everybody's well, going to have questions left, right, and center. Yeah, well, throw in the questions, guys. Throw in the questions about this suburb. Um, throw in the questions about anything that you want here. Um, is it too cheap to throw in? Yeah, go on. There has been some questions. Um, let's just have a look because there, there were there were some questions. Is that valuable? Like, was that data deep dive good? I felt like I felt like I was on a roll there for a little while, and I got my bubble burst by the uh, not not being there. <laughs> not being on the market that really i was so pumped <laughs> i'm like yes it's still there we're good to go we've got, we got a question here i think this was uh I'm, i want to go and grab a beer so i'm gonna i'm gonna sort of uh somehow hide so i, I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna hand this mic over to joe for a little bit just um oh my god yeah. i want to see who okay, asked cool. question. somebody asked a question would you okay. would you say because this is your this is you love reno so you can talk about this for five minutes and i, I will be back you can talk about it for five hours. Um, would you say this Reno is thirty thousand dollars with most of the most of the work outsourced? Yeah. So if we go back to this property, not property principles, property wherever it went. Um, I'm going to move my little face. Yeah, let's uh, let's get rid of Jeff's our face. face. Yeah, there you go. Good work. Good work. Good work. Okay, run run along, Jeff. Um, yep. Cool. Uh, yeah, thirty thousand dollars. I think that you could definitely do. You could spruce up a little bit in in here. Um, you could even go as wild as rendering. That would start to jump up the price. Um, but to be honest, what have we actually what have we actually got here? We've got paint cleaning and painting. Paint. We can hire a painter for that. Pulling up the carpet. So I imagine it's a concrete slab. Um, so we're going to lay some uh, lino down. Um, we're going to knock out some some of the walls here. Um, so you can definitely outsource this stuff. You could definitely get a renovation done. Um, organize. The thing is, you got to be organized. So I did a renovation in Geelong. You, um, I've talked about it before. I went to the site two or three times. I went, yeah, two, three times. I went there one to purchase it to look at it. Um, said yes, great. Then I went down there to organize all my trades, and then I made a plan on the wall. I just drew in a sharpie over here. This is the next thing that we need to do. We need to. Um, demolish we need to tear out the kitchen we need to tear out this we need to knock out the walls okay then what then we need to tear out the carpet blah 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 and then installation um and then you go to bunnings it's not easy doing a remote renovation but to be honest it's all on the phone and working online to find the people that can build the kitchen like the ikeas and the the bunnings and stuff so remote renovations are 100 percent possible especially if you leverage <laughs> with the um, account, uh, property. account managers, what am I saying? Property manager. The property managers, property managers, yeah. Um, so we could definitely remove some of these, change the lighting so we're going to need an electrician. Um, we obviously haven't done our um, multiple stages of due diligence, right? We need a property person, to a property inspector to go through here and make sure that everything says that's, it is what it is. That's the building, yeah. That's the building. Um, yeah. And then we can and this, start. That. This is this is this is amazing. I would have, yeah, bloody hell, you should have. Like the only thing no, I would. So you go. Yeah, go, mate, go. The thing I would have would be um, as a as a, as an extra value add would be what the what, what how how where the property is located in relation to the land because I would love to. I'm I'm a I'm a big kind of subdivision kind of junkie. So I don't. I mean, it's not a funny way to put it, but a subdivision kind of um, a sucker for subdivision, I suppose. It's, not yeah, even well, a great um, one. Yeah, I mean, there are other tools that you can use, um, but this, like, just this view alone tells you: is there precedence for a subdivision here? By the looks really, of things. No. Oh, actually, yeah. What, what, what about what about, number, what about number what about number eight? Oh, number eighteen. Eight? No, number yeah. eighteen. Couple, couple of doors up. What do you got no, there? I think, oh, I think it's a garage. I think it's a garage. Yeah. So we yeah. can double check. Oh. We can throw our layers on. Yeah. Here's my. Oh, well, because the, the other, yeah, the way the way you'd want to do it is oh, no, look, uh, there you go, subdivided, boom. Yeah, I mean that, that could there. be a running flat, but yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to build and keep the existing, build something on the back, um, because in that yeah. way you're, you're not having demol demolition costs, you're not losing rents. Um, but anyway, um, so another another person asked, how about a property near a hospital? 
Well, when, 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 yeah, I mean, if this person is still watching uh, who asked this question, when you say that, do you mean like how are you talking next door to the hospital or what are we, what are we sort of, what, what's... Well, we've identified that there is opportunity within the hospital, right? But I'm talking just on market, the, the on market that we found up in here. Um, so to find, again, what do we, let's go to our, our flood zone. Now, obviously this town is like, it's like this really helped me out. This really helped me boil down where I'm buying and where I'm not buying, right? Um, but not a lot of towns are like this. This is this is like Goulburn Valley. There's a Goulburn River right there running through it. It's going to flood. Um, it's going to be prone um, to having a flood. It's not going to flood, but it's prone to flood. Could we, could we do something like super? I mean, this is this is really this is opening you up here, Joe. So, um, okay. I, I, but would would people see value if we just picked a suburb? Somebody threw a suburb in. Let's just do that kind of. Do that quick search, not not all of it, because that that's taking you hours. But let's just have a look and see if we can find some flood maps. This, I mean, this could, or even this could. Oh no, not stuff. flood. No nah, man, no, flood maps are hard to find. I mean, if we go to Queensland, we can. Flood maps are easy to find in Queensland. They've okay, got so more somebody, somebody, pick a, somebody pick a suburb in Queensland. Let's kind of just do a quick, in very in high Bay. level. In, um, so what's a Morton. suburb in Queensland people want to look at? Um, uh, let, 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 let's let the audience decide because I, I want to see them kind of. Uh, no, but every council is different. I know this council. Uh, all right. <laughs> I just got to find it. Rockhampton. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Sutherland. Gee, Sutherland. That's you. Aaron. Do, do you know that? Um, that's. You know Aaron? No. Okay. Okay. I think I think you do cool. know. Deception Bay. I, here we go. There you go. Who said that? Probably. I know probably that. Hayden. Was that Hayden? Yeah, I bet Hayden said that. Oh, no, no, Kay, Kay, Keely or Kaylee. Yeah, Keely. Yep. We set, okay, let's just go to this first one here. Okay, let's fly into Deception Bay. Um, okay, cool. So in um, – uh, I'm going to use my mouse. It's a little bit easier. So this yep. here is Deception Bay. Um, um, so we've got different names for different um, – Suburbs and locations, uh, like um, council zoning. So they've got suburban neighbourhood. It's named differently in um, every region. Um, so all of the zones look very similar. We are right near the water here. So there are kind of two sides. And it would be great to get Hayden on here, who's a, um, a fantastic connoisseur of Deception Bay. Um, hey, I'm familiar with I don't, it. I don't I think you can handle it. You're alive with your data driven. You'll, you'll um, just, you'll, no, you'll, you'll, be, exactly. you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll be crying um so flood zoning so let's have a look so i own a property somewhere along here somewhere i think it's in here wilmot i don't even know oh there it is some one of these ones here um so let's see now this was purchased a while back okay so here we go deception bay floods we've got some We've got some flooding zones in between where they have our, um, like a river, a little stream maybe running through it, or is it is it piping? Looks like it might be piping, and you can see they haven't built any houses along here. So yeah, I mean, check out the flood zones for every single location the, you a go flood to. Flood hazard. So what's what's the difference between? I mean, you probably don't know this, but a flood hazard versus a flood zone. Like what? What? Why do they distinguish a flood hazard? I mean, is it is a flood hazard a flood zone? Right, let's find out. Pri priority development area. Yeah, I'm just going to say flood zone. I'm just going to, you know, the safe the safe bet is to confirm this stuff and what this actually means because there might be a golden opportunity, right? There might be somebody that's saying, there is no way in hell that I am buying a property in, you know, this location. And other people are going to say the same thing, and that knocks out buyers. But you speak to the council, and they're like, oh, we haven't updated our map just yet. We're in our 2016 data. Um, we've realized that this is not a flood zone. Okay, there's a golden opportunity for you. Yeah, so property, is in, in, property is an imperfect market. So, I mean, um, yeah. and that's, that's, that's why it's uh, an imperfect market. There's, um, there's opportunities that can arise. So I'll, I'll, I'd love to see Going some back questions. back to what I'd say. Property yeah. is an inefficient market. <laughs> So I'd, I'd love to see some questions for Joe because he's uh, he's absolutely gone super deep here. So if any of the stuff that he's presented tonight or any of the stuff you want want him to go over, I'd, I'd love to hear um, him grilled um, by the... Um, <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll help him out, of course. But um, I think there was a couple more questions up here. 
let's see. Can we have? Oh, so somebody, I'm going to, um, I'm going to give a plug to our YouTube. So I've popped it in. And somebody asked, can uh, can we have this lo- uh, live as a video for later to see? Absolutely, you can. It is on YouTube. We usually get it within the week, um, depending on how quickly I download, click the button, and get our get our first uploaded. So we've got our YouTube plugged in there. Um, yeah. Somebody said, "Can we get access to Kent's tool? 100 um, percent. Suburb Trends is is the is the place that you can check that out. Um, where is this November report coming from? Is that from? Uh, I think it's oh yeah. Um, I'll can find I'll the link it? for that. The 2021 oh, regional yeah. report, yeah. Um, yeah. Region, um, regional. Somebody, somebody said leaving and moving to Logan. I was like, oh, geez, that another. That, that's um, I don't know about moving to Logan. That's um, I mean, I'm sure it's a lovely place, but I mean, what am I say? I, I live in. But uh, cool websites too, Jeff. Oh, council websites too. Perfect investments in there. Oh, oh you found it. How'd you find it? Oh, oh, it's on my screen. Oh, you can, <laughs> this is it here. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, Jeff, good find. You're reading my yeah. mind. Um, yeah. So it's this in here, and then you scroll down and download the report, and you can see how many people are leaving Victoria, how many people are leaving New South Wales. And that's the next place that I want to do a data deep dive, guys. Where are all these people going to in Queensland? And what does it actually mean for the Queensland market? Now, we, the suburb deep dive was actually chosen as Queensland. But um, Shepparton was the real suburb name. So we had to go with the one that was actually the suburb. So um, <laughs> if there's a location in, in Queensland, um, you know, we can be able to, we'll be able to do something like that. But this report was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it. Well written um, by Eleanor Cree, that Eleanor, it's written Cree- by Eleanor. Crea, Crea. Creek. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like an Irish last name. Um, so, so I, I, are people getting do people get heaps of value from that kind of session? Because, or, or I mean, the session is over. But if, if you did, maybe it's something we could do um, on a on a sort of quarterly basis. Because I think I, I think we can refine the process because there's a lot of information that was thrown here, um, and we could even just get get refined and, and sort of see what people found useful and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, I think when we start. Going high, like these things, supply and demand, understanding inventory, understanding vacancy rates. It, there's more to it. Like you have to really spend a bit of time talking about it. It doesn't get justice when you do it this way. Um, Some interesting questions. Um, so, wow, heaps, heaps of questions, actually. So Facebook user, I'm going to find out. Oh, here, this is Aaron again. Sorry. Let's, so um, the local university add much value? Or so, so, Joe, are you, are you a buyer's agent Australia wide or selected states? Um, yeah, oh, what, what do you great buy question. Here? Tell us which, which um, suburbs are you buying in? Like which I want to know. I'll tell street. you every suburb. Shepparton might may or may not be on the list. Um, okay. it's it's an interesting one. Um, uh, but I buy in um, all locations. Um, not Northern Territory and not Tasmania. Um, WA looks like a good opportunity. Queensland, Victoria, South Australia. I, I guess this is a data backed like we're we're a data backed business and. Um, so it's going to be going to where the opportunity lies, where that intersection between um, supply, like we were saying in here, where the intersection between supply and demand is meeting, but where it doesn't already bolt out of the gate, right? So I feel like some of the some of the, the data points that we've been looking at, it could have been indicating that we've already missed our missed our period for this area, but it also, you know, there might be opportunity so, there. So still. why um, can some something said they're interested in me? Um, WA, you said uh, you'd consider it. Um, why? What's the re? I mean, WA. I, I twelve eighteen months ago was saying, yeah, yeah, w, WA, good opportunity. Um, what What are you seeing out over there? Because I, I don't. I might, I'll happily admit I don't know the market. I, I don't know yeah. it at all. Never, never been to Perth. I, I don't. And I'm, I'm, well, I'm like, I, I just, yeah. So you, you tell me. You people, give us a, people are yeah. going. People are going there. Um, but also the the last boom that there was there, right, where it was like massive peak and then drop off we're starting to get that leveling out and it's showing some indicators in a select few locations um that has some potential um but the this boom is a lot more um it's not just a one horse town anymore they've they've kind of connected and and kind of built up to a point. I mean, they, they build up the borders, Joe, mate. You can't get into WA at the moment. I mean, you won't. And, and this, I mean, I, I, I just, I, 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 to me, I, I, the thing I don't like about WA. Yeah, but, is I mean, that's only temporary. 
Like, how is I don't know how temporary is it, though? I mean, they've, been, they've had it close for nearly two years. They've announced it in February, but we'll see how we go. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not – yeah, I, I'd love to see somebody throw a suburb on, on WA because, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious but as somebody who, yeah, I, I just – I don't know. I, yeah. I, was, I was interested in it 12, 18 months ago. Now I'm sort of like I, I just don't – I don't see it. But, well, the yeah. pro- I mean, rents have increased drastically over there. Yeah. Which okay. is a good sign of – future price growth going on so if people are, are like i haven't got any of the data i haven't got any of the charts right now and i can get them later on um but yeah. the rents are going absolutely bananas over there and the supply is very tight the supply of units absolutely do not touch the unit market over there however some pockets are looking pretty pretty juicy um yeah. so sure. never never say never but just go to where the data go to where the data flows i think i said that before um yeah yeah um, so somebody, yes, we, we did have this up from K, uh, K, KC, or K, no, Kaylee, sorry. Um, um, she asked, does a local university value, uh, do, does a local university value add much or not a deal breaker? Um, what are your thoughts on this show? I, I've, got, I've got some well, you, you've got you've got some views on this and I like like hearing what um, you say on the uni. So give us a bit of a breakdown. Yeah, I mean, for me, my my it really depends. I, I I wouldn't say not to buy because of a university, but I, I don't I don't see a lot of value from a university. Yes, it creates jobs. Um, so so it kind of depends on. It, it's not a. It isn't black or white, but I would say because you got to think who's going. Who, who what is the majority of people who go to university? It's students, right? And are students going to be buying properties in the areas of like? Let's just use the one near. What's that one up the? Is it Petrie? Petri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I, and I I look at that and I say, well, okay, great. I mean, if if it stacks, it's kind of, yeah. I would say if the area stacks up, then then great. Um, but I to me, I wouldn't. It's it's a bit of a. I wouldn't buy or not buy because of the university. Um, maybe it's a value yeah. add. Um, but I, I don't I don't see that it's um it, the people that go to university typically aren't going to be buying a property uh, in in the area. They might be renting, but even that they've got on campus accommodation. There's all this kind of, I don't know. To me, it's it's something. It's a school. The one thing that. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on that, Joe? Anyway. Yeah, I I, I tend to um, agree that they're they're like this one in Petrie was very much like very hyped up. The market has done really well over there. It was actually an area that I was um, looking to buy in for for a little period. Um, but it's it's. Like you think of university, but it's a lot of students. So yeah, it's good. I think it's. I think overall, it's a net positive. But I don't think it's a net like whoa, net net positive. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, you've broken your computer, that, man. You've just you've done. You've I know. Added, it's, added it's, added we, we've, we've done it. Um, we've done it. So um, Aaron, let's. This this is one that I think um, it, it is is a value add potentially. Um, mm-hmm. Should you factor in proximity to schools? And, and I'll, I'll throw a caveat in there and say it depends on the school because if, if you're yeah. just, you know, just exactly your typical, right. yeah, your, your, your typical sort of state school or, or your public school, um, look, there's some really prestigious public schools out there, but, I mean, there's certain school catchment areas that people would absolutely buy or, or, or figure out how to get, get into. To um, Yeah, so I think proximity to schools, depending on the school, yes, can add a lot of value. Yeah, so if you look at on domain, they even have it searched by school. So you can actually search the property by the school. So like if we're in a regional town like this, unless it's got like a an awesome like ranking, then absolutely, yeah, it'll add value to be within that, you know, that sphere. But for just a normal everyday, you know, school, not 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 so much. But if you're in, you know, some of the, you know, King's College and and in those type of same, Sydney same and Melbourne. Like cultural model farms. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know the ones in, in Melbourne or, or Brisbane. There's uh, probably some great schools up there. Or Sydney, Sydney boys high, Sydney girls high. Always um, what's, what's this one here you're looking at, Joe? Is this in what, oh, what, know, like, It said it said search by school. Um, oh, geez. yeah. Um, cool. Okay, guys. Well, um, that's that oh. is the data deep dive. That, hang on, should I play my uh, should I play my little video? How do I do it? How do I play the video? <laughs> well, there you go. That's yeah. that. I, I want to ask you a few more questions about um, about 
property principles. Um, just for, and, and if anybody's got any, like, we're just, I'm, as long as you're comfortable, are you comfortable? Are you okay with that, Joe? Mate. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine. Well, cool. just making sure because I, I don't want to, I don't want to sort of make you feel uncomfortable because I do that every session anyway. Um, but, uh, but if there's any other questions that people want to talk about, but I, I, I'm interested to know what's, What's your typical, if somebody comes to you a budget of 800000 are you able to, I mean, is there a typical client you, you want to be able to help out? Like what, give us a, give us a bit of a, I'll give you a bit of an opportunity to steal. Like what's, what are you looking, have you decided that yet or you haven't? Yeah. Um, so like the, the opportunity, like the idea is to get, what did I say? Buy the best property in the best location at the best price for the buyer brief, right? What is the person looking for? If someone's looking for absolute, yeah, there it is there. Buy the best property in the best location at the best price for the buyer brief. So um, it kind of gets up to that like $800,000 mark to where like investment properties um, where I'd be kind of saying, well, maybe we should start splitting this up and start looking at areas that are at that $400,000 mark. So, I mean, I'm looking at properties where there's there's value at three hundred kind of like yeah 300 minimum like minimum maybe 350 um up to you know in between that 600 700 like in between there is where it really starts to make sense as an investment property you're not, where you you're can not start buying a property really... in sydney or in melbourne then though, because for that that pro- yeah I, yeah I, no I so yeah exactly so oh well one thing to mention is this is a, a data-led buyer's agency where i am um finding investment grade properties, right? So if somebody comes to me to buy their dream home, um, I'm not going to be out. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm are here to you, find. Are you saying Joe though, that if I, if I bought a million dollar property in Sydney and it's gone to 1.5, 1.6, or let's just say anywhere, one, a $1 million property to 1.6 million, that's not investment grade. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that's investment grade. It's investment grade. If you can afford the cash flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, but yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. You, you're, you're focusing holistically though. You, you're looking at the cash flow because if you're buying a million dollar property, you're going to be you're going to yeah. have a year between well, two to three so percent. W- w- as a part of this, as a part of this property plan process, we go through like your serviceability and how much you can actually afford. So if you yeah. buy a one million dollar property, and everyone like normal people, you know, can probably get to a one million dollar borrowing capacity, right? But that's it. You buy one property, you've just chucked away all of this negative cash flow that you've got. You've then got to hold on to it. But why not buy multiple, you know, three, three properties or two properties um, at a lower rate that is going to grow, but also sustain the portfolio to be able to make a scalable portfolio to take it to the next level. Yeah, that's that's kind of my views on on buying a one million dollar asset because it, if you're trying to build for the long term, and like a lot of the people that I you know, that, that I chat to about this, they're like, okay, cool. You know, what's your ultimate goal, right? We talk about ultimate goal a lot. And um, the ultimate goal is to buy a house in Sydney or buy a house in Melbourne. I want to live where I want to live. I want to live where I'm living right now, but can't afford well, to. Okay, great. How Logan. are you going to? Uh, yeah, uh, when I grew up, I wanted to buy a house in Logan. Um, um, no, but the point, the point being, let's get rid of this. The point being is like, we can't, we can't afford now just to get our dream home in, in Cronulla, right? We have to build a portfolio to get to a point to have that dream home in the future, in 10 years time, once we've got our portfolio structure. But if you're not going to, like, you can't save up a, what, a 20% deposit, a 10% deposit at, um, you know, $1.5, $2 million, it becomes very tough. Yeah. Last last question of mine, I'd say, unless a really good one comes through, um, Aaron, I, I think I'm going to answer this pretty quickly. He's asked heaps of questions, so I don't know if he's a good mate of yours, Joe, but I mean, he's mentioned subtle. He's pumping my ties, old Aaron. Tell me how great I am, Aaron. No. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. He's just right, asking Joe, questions. Okay. I, w- I would, I'm, I'm going to, I'd very rarely say never, Aaron, but I'm, I'm going to say this is probably the closest I'd say to never I, I'm, that I'll ever get. I'm never going to manage my own property. Because I just, I just like, what are you, what, are you, what is the purpose of the of the investing? Is it to, is it to become an expert in, in in property management, or is it to to make money, or to to kind of do all that, not just make money, but kind of provide housing for other people, and to have other outsource the management side of things, um, or outsource the, the kind of the the nuts and bolts, um, the day to day sort of daily grind? Because otherwise, you have to really understand the, the regulations. You have to under, you have to manage the tenant relationship. Um, and, and for, for 20 to 40 bucks a week, to me, it's, it's 100% worth paying somebody else to do that or even 15 bucks a week. 
oh man, it's crazy how cheap. And I, I was like negotiating with my, um, my property manager. I'm like, she's like, it's going to be eight and a half uh, percent. And, um, and we're just going back and forth. And this is when I first got my property. She's like eight and a half percent. Oh no, no, no. I'm like, I want 7%. And she's like, no. And anyway, we didn't even go to meet the middle. She's like, I'm like, fine, fine. I'll do eight, um, eight, you know, 8.25 or, um, and she's like, let's just do eight because we're talking about like $20 here or no, not even like just some ridiculous sum. It's so affordable to have a property manager. And when stuff hits the fan, you got to have it. You've got to make sure that like there's a new change in regulation in, I think at Victoria and in Queensland for um, fire alarms, yeah, yeah. you need to make sure that they'll allow you to do that. Um, so just, just do it, man. It's not, it's not worth the, it's not worth the aggravation. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, um, before we, um, that, that was, that was a yeah. great kind of question to, I mean, cause a lot of people want to do everything themselves and, and, and look, I, I, look, I've used buyer's agents and I've bought property by myself, but I've, I've heckled Joe pretty hard on this. And I said, look, because, because you kind of, because you're a, you're a co-admin or you're a co-founder of, of Ozprop, I want you to give the community uh, an opportunity to have access. If they want access to, a, to one buyer's agent, look, we're, we're buyer's agent agnostic. Um, but if you want to, so what, what, what can people do? What, have you, what offer have you come up with if people want to get in touch with you? Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. It would be great to have Oz Property people purchase the, you know, be a part of this and and help me and the team help. Uh, You're not selling me, me Joe. You, we just... Help you purchase the property. Well, I mean, we've got this like this amazing mapping, this amazing software that we have to build out your property plan, um, built by jo- Jordan Deong is absolutely fantastic. Um, so that's that's worth the price of itself. But um, what do you have to do? Uh, what are we doing? Um, I don't know, Jeff. What do we what do we want to do? What a 20 percent discount on our buyer's agent fee for Oz property members. The thing is, I, I don't work like this is not one of those scaled a thousand, you know, customers, buyers agents just spitting out customers. You're working you're working closely with us as a team. Um, and we only we only um run five people at a time. Um, so we currently have two people already, um, on the go, finding properties for them, working in through the process. So there are three slots for people to jump on board. So if you want to do that, jump on the website, go in here, enter your name, your email address, your phone number. What do you need? Do you need a property purchase, a commercial property? Are you a high net worth individual? Pop some notes in like, I love Joe. Um, and then book in a call and then we'll reach out and we can just have a discovery call. It's a free session and we can find out what kind of opportunities there are. Um, but yeah, 20% off for hours property people. I, I mean, that, well, that I, think, sounds- I, I think, I think somebody, if people want that, um, they should, they should write in the comment that, um, Jeff, Jeff is a maniac. Um, or maybe not that, maybe just, let me just write in there anything else you'd like to mention. People. Maybe say Oz, I, I came from Oz Property Investors. Um, so if you watch this, and then because otherwise, how's Joe going to know? Otherwise, every I'm giving everybody twenty. Yeah, I love Oz Prop. Let's say that <laughs> I love Oz Prop. Yeah. Um, and then submit that in, and then we will we'll reach out and we can have a chat. Yeah, can, for, can... for your fees, Joe. But um, I'll, I'll get I'll get that. I'm trying to give that person. Let's see who that person is. It's twenty percent. It's twenty percent off. Twenty <laughs> percent off whatever the fee. So that's Cody, mate. Cody, come on in. Yeah, so yeah, jump, jump, uh, have a chat to Joe. I'm sure we'll give you a if you if you say run through. We can run through, run through the value. I mean, the whole point. This is what I love about um, buyers agency. You you invest X amount of money and you get way much, way more, right? Like that that property that we were just looking at. um, There are opportunities like that all over Australia. um, But buying, oh yeah, get rid of this image. Um, That should be priority everywhere. Anyway, okay. Yeah, people reach out if you want anything. This is just exciting, right? This is just an exciting thing for me. Um, it's been awesome to be a part of this community and we're still going to provide the value for people. Um, how far are we f- uh, forecasting our property plans? These are 10-year-plus um, property plans and um, they go um, to 30 years as well. We have 30-year plans as well. So depending on what you want, right? The thing is a lot changes in 30 years. Um, like that 10, 15 year is like a lot more like, yeah. I mean, in 10 years, it's crazy what can change. I'll, t- but- I'll tell you what we might do. We might, um, I mean, I'll, we'll have a chat offline. Maybe we'll get Jordan on here to have a chat for his property plans. Um, maybe. We'll see. Mate, awesome. yeah, that that doesn't sound like you. How many beers have you had? You don't sound like a man that, that likes a man to, to talk about his products. 
But if there's value oh. to the people, that's what it's all about, mate. Yeah, I mean, I've only had two, so it's. I just, I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to keep an open mind, Joe. I'm, I don't want to just look. As long as there's value, I'll, I'll, I'll get there. So, anyway, let's let's finish off, Joe. I, I want to th- look before we. I, I want to thank you for just um, for running this thing with me and uh, putting up with me, kind of ranting on on people commenting lots of stuff. And and I, I know you're going to absolutely knock this uh, thing out of the park, but. But we at Ozprop 2022 and beyond is going to be amazing for us. We, we build, we're talking about big things in the background as well. Um, so it's not just property principles. Ozprop is going to be doing massive kind of. I've got some big, big goals and big plans as well. Um, just to add value yeah. to the community, just help everybody out. So, but I thank you for being well, a part of it. that journey, and we'll continue. Thank you, mate. We've got some exciting things ahead. Like this is all just been two friends talking about property. We both have property portfolios. We both talk about property all day. So we may as well just pop it on record and provide the value to people. And hopefully we've we've done that tonight. So yeah. And thank you for you know running through it all with me, mate. I think we've done well tonight. I think it's awesome. I'm very excited about this new role. And um, you know, um yeah, I've got yeah, I don't need to sell myself. Um, you guys already know who I am. Um, But yes, thank you, everyone. Awesome session. If you have any questions, reach out to me, pop them in the DMs. Jeff, do you want to pop? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. Let's go buy a property, guys. Thank you, Jeff. Maybe 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 not.